open. Okay. I'm good. I'm great. <laughs> Peace to the family. Peace to the family. Where you guys at? Peace to you. Having a good old time with this baby girl. Yeah, word. <laughs> we had a heck of a naming ceremony. We're working on the footage. It was a very powerful ceremony. We had a lot of real quality comments made about it. King Los took the night home with the comment. He said, picture being born and realizing upon your arrival, your existence was extremely important to everybody. Now, we all know we're important from the time we come to this world. But to initiate a ceremony that alludes to the same is a very powerful thing. And the ritual, the rite, the ceremony that we perform to name baby girl really encouraged everybody else either to make children or do one for their very own. And that's what's great about popularizing culture, pop culture, right? The real pop culture is our ancient African archetypal conception. <laughs> Thank y'all, family. So I wanted to talk to you about where babies come from. Boom, look at baby girl. <laughs> she don't even look like she just came out the womb, right? <laughs> Her name is Nefertare Camila Kosowa Atumre. Nefertare Camila Akosawa Atumre. The gorgeous one has arrived in the perfection of a Sunday by way of the hidden power of Ray. And you'll see why we gave her that name when the time comes. <laughs> so excited. She's just chilling right now. She's chilling. Yeah, so let's talk about the realm of the ancestors. Seven pounds, nine ounces. Almost two feet tall. Came out the womb. One foot. Nine and a half inches, two and a half inches shy of two feet. She grew another inch too. So she's ten and a half inches right now. One and a half inches shy of two feet. Yeah. So let's talk about the ancestors, shall we? And so. We understand that in Kemet, the word for ancestors is very interesting because it can apply to someone who passed away, and it also can apply to somebody that is old, and it can also apply to a newborn, very young people. And normally, when you see the hieroglyphs or the metal nature symbol for the um, words that allude to ancestors, the words that allude to elders or youth or babies, traditionally you'll see a mountain there and that defines the moment because you can see the front part of the mountain, but you can't see what's on the other side. So when somebody goes to the realm of the ancestors, it said that they went to the other side, right? A side that we don't see. And so when our elders go to the 
realm of the ancestors, they go to the other side, and the ancestors is on the other side, and the children come from that side onto this side. So that's why the word ancestor applies to even living people, those that are elders and those that are newborn. So our children come from the realm of the ancestors, according to the ancients. And I tend to agree because when you listen to them, every now and then they say something that makes you like, that was deep, that was profound. Or they make comments or they just do things that make you realize they was here before. Even as young as a baby that doesn't talk. <laughs> He's so peaceful, man. Look at this girl being so peaceful. Thanks for the congratulations. Look at this peaceful baby. And I'm so addicted to her. I don't know how to leave her. She playful too. She be actually smiling already. When she's sleeping, she be smiling. They may say they don't dream. And I could dig that. Babies don't dream yet. But she definitely having visits and encounters because she smiles when her eyes are closed. Look at that green juice just manifested out of nowhere. <laughs> just got a green juice out of nowhere. Yeah, so, yeah, I agree. Babies don't dream. But she's definitely still connected. And you know, we come into this world... I'm talking real light because I want her to relax, you know? I don't want to wake her up. When, when we come into this world, mom's been heavy on the ginger. My goodness. Queen of Four be, yeah, Queen of Four just brought me this shit. <laughs> she be going super hard. I wonder if y'all can see this. Yeah, she be giving me the thickest potions, man. My goodness. She could do a little more water in it. My goodness, what's in here? I'm gonna take it nonetheless. So, what was we talking about? When we come into this world, we're operating off of ether. So, from the time we come into this world, we come in this world operating off of ether, but always remember, we don't come into this world living, we come to this world dying. We're dying the second we come into this world. The goal is the afterlife, that's the goal. So we have to die a scientific death. Okay, that's the goal. And so, the goal is also to see how much of life we may be able to achieve during this death. And that's the meaning of consciousness. That's an accurate account of being conscious. Being conscious is the ability to access life during this death time. How much life can you live during the death process? And then you got to really get fixed of what exactly is life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then it gets real deep. Is once we put life into true perspective, and then we realize in order to be conscious, it's one's ability to access life during the death time. Because we're only going to have a small fraction of life that we live inadvertently. All other aspects of life, you have to assess it. You have to maintain it. You have to initiate it. You have to be aware of it. All right. So when you look at your DNA, about 3% of your DNA qualifies what you call life. The other 97% only activates in your passing. So they realize over 97, about 97%, a little more, a little less of your life commences upon you, your death. So life begins upon your death. So you only live 3% of your life in this lifetime. 
that junk DNA that makes up about 97% of the DNA that's unaccounted for, that's yet to be decoded, it said that it activates in your passing. That's right, 97% of your life commences in your death. So you're only operating on 3% of your life right now, if that. Think about it. So the most conscious person goes beyond, or the most conscious person accesses 3% upward. And the goal is to access as much life in this death time as possible. So you could be able to perpetuate it in the hereafter. So we have to cultivate the higher being in our children so they can teach us about the other side so much so that we can continue to exist thereafter. What's up? Huh? I'm talking to the baby and I'm talking to them. <laughs> yeah, they see you with the big eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the um, target examiner yeah. was here. Right? I'm just building. Did I just see you? I'm like, okay, who is he actually talking to? I know she hears me in the womb. I mean, I had this discussion with her last night, just her and I, when our net was sleeping. Mm -hmm. You got her? Mm -hmm. Boom, 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 boom. She's got a nice little hair. I know. I Yeah. Yeah, so Queen just made me some extra dense something. <laughs> Whatever these chopped up articles of vegetables are my herbs is like it's like um the E three live shots with the with the extra kind of pepper in it. Yeah. And then some. <laughs> she gives me, well, I say, yo, she normally fills the cup up. I'm like, this is concentrate. <laughs> so, yeah. So, the, so, what's consciousness? Consciousness is the ability to access life during this death time. Because we only live... 3% of our life during this existence and the other 97% is activated is activated upon our death so just think about that that's deep and so it goes back to what we're saying when we see on the glyphs every time we talk about someone young or talking about someone old or talking about an ancestor in general we're always talking about someone on the other side so we see the image of the mountain because we see one side of the mountain, but we just don't know what's on the other side. And so every time we depict our ancestors, there's a mountain in the word, or even a determinative. And that's what a determinative is. You see the word, but then you see a symbol that represents the period at the end of the sentence. But the way that it works in the glyphs, imagine if at the end of every sentence, instead of you putting a period there, you put an image of something that encapsulates the thought of the whole sentence. So in the Medu Nature, I like to always say, for the hieroglyphic language, in the Medu Nature, I like to always say, every word is a sentence. And the period at the end of the sentence is a determinative. And so when we come into this world, we are operating off of ether. We have two umbilical cords. We have an umbilical cord that connected us to our mother, and we have the umbilical cord that connects us to the universe. And the ancestors believe that we have an etheric double. They call it the hot. And the hot is the etheric you. You're connected to that one. Okay? And the more you feed the physical, the less you feed the etheric double. The more you feed the etheric double, the less you feed the physical. And in this existence, it's about the mastery of feeding that etheric double without lacking in this existence. So you can prolong that nourishment. So when you leave, you can be conscious hereafter. <clears throat> Hence the purpose for the pockets of Shippama Wood. Or the book of coming forth by day. Or the book of the dead. Or as we properly translate, the ritual 
procession into the awakening. Earth. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what we're talking. We're talking that talk. I'm just telling you how the ancestors conveyed it. So we come to this world operating off of ether. And when we decline in our first phase, we start operating off of electricity. And when we, when we decline after that phase, we start operating off of gas or steam. So we come in on ether, we transition to electricity, and then we transition to steam. Now, of course, the goal is to see how long can we prolong the etheric aspect, <clears throat> okay? The goal is to prolong the etheric aspect. And in order to do so, you'll know you have that if you've maintained your theta waves. Okay? And those that's what children operate off for imagination. When they put a cape on their back and they jump off a couch and you can't tell them nothing. They really in a world like um, Superman. Or they get a broom and think they're flying on a broom. And they could just do that. A lot the theta waves go down as you become an adult burden with responsibility and obligations and you, you 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 circumvent or you undermine the significance of the imagination yeah <clears throat> so the goal is to continue to operate off of ether you have to be able to maintain the integrity of your theta waves the very thing that endows the youth with yeah I want her to get some sun but uh, after a while, you could put her right there. You could sit right there in that shade. I'll put a chair over there if you need it. Yeah, I just didn't want her in the house. We've just been boogieing, checkups and all that. So, I'm like, she needs to get some sun. Yeah, activate that melanin. Yeah, that blanket. <laughs> she only went out here in the blanket. <laughs> Mind the nose sweat. We all got that, huh, Matt and I. Yeah. That means we are healers. You see no sweat come easy and often. That person's a healer. So yeah, we operate off a of, off of ether. We operate off of ether. We transition to electricity. And in our latter stages we operate off of steam or gas. See how that works? And so when we did the naming ceremony, we did the naming ceremony to identify the significance of her arrival, that we are aware of who and what she is. That's why we had an astrology reading, numerological reading, solar numerology reading at the event. We had the beat of the drums and we emulated the sounds of existence. We wanted nature involved. So the drum, the science of the drum is botany and zoology. You got the skin of the drum, which comes from the animal. You got the bark of the drum, which comes from the plant. So we have the zoology kingdom and the plantae kingdom. We get natural tones that we know she'll be able to correspond with because when the spermatozoa hits that egg, it's a big bang, and that bang is produced on the tone D major, which is So it's very significant to have those drums there because we know life is a song. In fact, the word universe means one, Heim. First means Heim. So it's one Heim, right? So this existence is one song. And we understand that if you take the basis of the DNA, you know, uh, adenine, thionine, cytosine, guanine, they're aligned with the keys of the piano. Here, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, da. We'll, we'll see that there's correspondences there. In fact, we see that 
you have organs and organs get played. You have chords, vocal chords, chords get played. You have eardrums, drums get beat on, they get played. You have, what else you have? Your, your body, it's a percussion instrument, deals with breath, air. So tones are produced based on the way you breathe or speak because your biggest organ is your skin. And you can tell if a person's overweight, if a person's muscular, just by listening to their tone. Muscular people tend to be, Yo. it's like a strain. The skin is tight on their body. When they speak, the air comes out differently. Percussion instrument. And a person that's overweight, we tend to hear the breaths in between, but they have a distinct sound. You could actually determine almost definitively the weight or shape of a person just by them speaking. The human body is a percussion instrument. Organs get played. Your biggest organ, your largest organ is your skin. So you have organs, chords, eardrums, heartbeat. And when you leave this planet, they say it's important for you to die on what? A good note. They say it's important for you to leave on a good note. And back into the universe you go. One high. Universe. <laughs> one high or one poem. One song. Or well, what kind of song you sing? So the metaphor is existence, or the metaphor is the song, and the actuality is existence. <laughs> what kind of song you sing? When you come to this world, you come to this world hip-hop, or do you come to this world R&B? <laughs> like, this is, it's just deep when you look at it. How do people receive your music? Because your existence is music. You know, I know I'm getting old. I'm talking like an old man now. All these children got me just wanting to vibe and calm down and just build. <laughs> I feel old as heck now. <laughs> Talking that talk. And the young people listen to it, they probably be like, yo, you know my grandfather used to tell me some dope stuff. He said, life was a song. <laughs> Wear it up. So we go back. The goal is to exist on ether. So we go through ether, electricity, and steam. You know, that second breath that people talk about is when you operate off of electricity and suddenly you get that second gas. A lot of times that second gas is you kicking in the ether that still exists. Children run off of ether because children will have fun with something and say again. <clears throat> They'll say again and again. Let's do it one more time. Okay, let's do it one more time. Okay, let's do it one more time. And if, you, if this shit persists, they will never, ever stop. They always have to be stopped. If you ever put it to task, you'll realize you can switch and put another person there. They will never stop. That's ether. It don't even make sense. They got a vast supply of potential energy that they are just waiting to let off. And if it just takes a little game of hot scotch, hopscotch, if that's all you give them before them, they're going to burn all that ether right on that. So we got to find a way for what we call etheric placement. You have to find a way to channel that energy, that potential energy, and put it into something. So when they keep perpetuating the same themes, themes of that activity, when they continue to perpetuate the themes of that activity, they can establish greatness. I mean, how masterful do you want them to be at hopscotch? You feel what I'm saying? So we give them different activities, and they can't get enough of the activities they're given. So we gotta find a way to appropriate the activities in such a way that when they achieve mastery, it'd be something very substantial. Because when they establish fun through the sciences, they become scientists. And they're unrelenting in their quest to be great, running off of ether. Until you're burdened with responsibility, your theta waves go on decline, the way you perceive yourself. And now you're operating off electricity. You know, you could blow out or burn your fuse after a while. You got to recharge your battery, right? You know how the batteries go. You, you, you can operate for probably five hours, but you need to charge for at least two. The ratio. So you don't got to charge for as long as you are alive. But when you start working on steam, you damn near have to sleep as many hours as you're awake. So your life works like this. Ether, electricity, and gas, or ether, electricity, and steam, 
can be reminiscent to that of you come into this world by dawn, the awakening. Then, as you get older, you're in your afternoon. And as you become an elder, you're coming into the evening. And some of us are blessed holistically to see past midnight. Some of us are blessed to achieve the opportunity to almost see another dawn just before leaving. Just all perspective. I'm start reading these, these quotes out of these books, the Pyramid Text, the Coffin Text, Pakatish Apama Wood, Peret M. Haru, all right? The Black Book of the Dead, Mayhepri. Yeah, the Book of the Dead. We have the Black Book of the Dead. It's dedicated to a black man named Mayhepri. Confirmed, they found his body every day. And instead of the feather on the scale that represents my eye, they put the black man there to represent virtue all over. Kim in and beyond. That's right, the moral compass of society was depicted as a black man. You weigh the heart against the black man in judgment. <laughs> They move the feather and they put the black man there. But ain't that powerful? So in order for you to get to judgment, you had to be as virtuous as the black man was. May happen. That's the uh, Egyptian black book of the dead. I'll take some more. She, she loaded me up. I was giving her some sun. She, 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 she don't have her face get black and nothing else. Well, I didn't she know if you wanted to play. She's hiding. Yeah, she need that. She need that. She be hiding in the house all day. Yeah, she gotta get that activation. I didn't know if I had permission to take the blanket off. I'm also following your orders while I'm being innovative. That part I didn't know. It's okay. She left. Yeah, tell her to come get some. some. I'm in I'm in that. Tell her to bring out, just take the blanket off. Some fresh air, man. Give me some instructions. <laughs> she coming? Yes, I'm right here. Yeah, I was saying, um, let it get a little more air. Yeah. Just take the blanket off, man. Give us some air. All right, you good? Tell me how what? She's still sleeping? Hmm? Oh, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Still bomb. It's green juice. Look at what I'm looking at. Queen of Four ain't playing with us. <laughs> Interesting. When children are born, you can see. You learn a lot about different personalities. Like this guy, Stacy Garris, says 
After these, he's going back to his six wives and his mansion in Beverly Hills. He just had to put on his black conscious face. It's interesting. It's interesting how people could think certain types of thoughts in the midst of a new soul in this world with a conversation that has nothing to do with any of the worldly aspects that we're bombarded with day to day. <laughs> I never want to be consumed with that type of animosity or enmity. That's interesting. I never, I never want to miss the point. I never want to overlook the loaf for some crumbs. No, nah, don't worry. I'm not. It's not so much I'm focusing on that. It's also a lesson. And it's it's part of the conversation because these are the forces that our children will also be confronted with. And no matter how focused our children are on achieving their goals, there'll be always someone who's in it, working in an endeavor to defer their attention to something contrary to that of the mission statement, no matter how positive our children are. And that's why we have to teach them how to establish a psychic self-defense. Because if they're not taught about these adverse forces, they'll be burdened by the idea that somebody would wish them harm or distraction. I see them as the same thing, though. <laughs> so it's just real. I mean, just, just picture this. We would do a whole ritual for the coming of our child, spend all this money and all this organizing, get the drum plays, get the astrologer, get the belly dances, have Queen of Four instrumental in delivering this baby, okay? Go through the whole birthing process. The name is ceremony. Tomorrow is the burying of the placenta. Go through all of this just to give people the impression that I'm black conscious. It has nothing to do with our baby at all. <laughs> Yo, people are weird. And that type of weirdness is even scary because it almost gives you the impression that someone so weird would actually want you hurt. Because that's just extremely weird to think that this is all a ploy to get some attention and it has nothing to do with the significance of the new soul that's come here on planet Earth. And that tells me what enemies really are. <laughs> that's a fact. Now, she had a, um, I gotta ask Queen the actual position she was in when she did the birth. She had a certain term for it. Um, I didn't anticipate that particular position. It was pretty dope. It was her legs by her ears at an angle. It's a sleight of term. It ain't nothing uh, super scientific or anything. I, I just don't want to mess up the term. The bang. I get it, but don't worry about it. But yeah, just building with y'all. Just wanted to have a nice build. <clears throat> we got a holistic course coming up. It's going to be amazing. Geared towards women, children, and men. All the issues. On every level. It's going to be very intense. It's super intense. On every level. Love is law, family's business. Love is law, family's business. That's right. We just sipping on green. Not that dark, unless it's that dark green. Uh, but if you're interested in the courses or the mentorship, consulting, you know what to do. You go to brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. You always put your full name and your phone number. Brother. P O L I G H T 45 at gmail.com. Put your full name and phone number. Oh, yeah, don't worry. We don't got time to focus on that. <laughs> That's what we on. So, peace, love, and blessings. I'm about to cook food for the family.
You didn't have all of this talk gotten us. With all your talk, why are we still in this present state? Where is your solution for the advancement of our people? Stacey Garris, so angry. I'm demonstrating the best thing that one could ever do. That's playing an active role as a father in conjunction with the mother, in conjunction with the other mothers or the sister wives, in conjunction with the grandmother, the mother, in conjunction with the rest of the community that all made a vow during the naming ceremony to play an integral role in our child. We, we've rebirthed the concept of it takes a village to raise a child. Come on in, okay? It's been rebirthed. Uh, you can put the onus on changing the whole world on me, should you choose. I don't mind that responsibility. Because when I'm endowed with that responsibility, I share How you doing, sis? When I'm endowed with that responsibility, I share it with all those who have the same goals. That's how we do it. When you ask, what has this done? Or what? You know, I've never been the type to blame someone or condemn someone for where we are as a people. I've only been the type to contribute to the best of my ability because I've learned we got 1% from 100 people or 100% from one person. And if we get 100% from one person and something happens to that one person, then we have nothing. But if one person falls, we have 99% left. So the answer is to do what you conceive to be the best thing you possibly can do. And one of the best things we can do is perfect ourselves individually and then make children thereafter. Or then part wisdom on people, particularly children, but anyone that's bound to have children or effect children, which is just about everybody. And the reason being is if I wound up with cancer because I'm smoking because of a habit that I had, I'm going to show you how purposeful life can be on a simple level, or death can be on a simple level. If I were to smoke cigarettes to the point of cancer, and my daughter's daughter's daughter had a baby, this is past 200 years from now. And over 200 years from now, my daughter's daughter's daughter has a child. She goes to the physician, and they say, do you have a history of cancer in the family? She says, yes. I said, yes. And they, they pin it back to me, the great, 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 great. They pin it back to me and they say, you know what? Yeah, my ancestor, Brother Polite, was the one smoking the cigarettes and I got the cancer. I actually get blamed for something that took place 200 years later. While I'm not even in existence, I'm not even in rotation here. I'm still getting blamed for things that I did now, 200 plus years from now. So how can I contribute to the black nation at the smallest yet the highest level? To be perfect in as many actions as possible. To avoid the affliction that's genetically bestowed upon my posterity and their posterity and so forth and so on. To also consider if 200 plus years from now, someone can inherit an inevitable bad. They can also inherit an inevitable good. And if they can inherit an inevitable good, then it stands to reason. Anything I do to become a better person, not only my child, but my children's children will inherit it. And it gives them that much more inclination towards success. So at the very least that we can do is the greatest thing we can do, and that is to perfect oneself. That is to have knowledge of self and then make it applicable. So what is it that I'm doing is what everyone should be doing. How can I be greater than my predecessor? Not in ego, but as a contributor to the goal. How can I make myself more perfect in my generations? So that this data can be dumped into the DNAs of my posterity. Think about it. So the most minuscule thing you can do, the most selfish thing that you can do, is actually 
simultaneously and paradoxically the greatest thing you could do. Because we've handicapped mm -hmm. our children mm -hmm. by failing to be great. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we've handicapped our children by failing to be great. Just think about that. So if your thing was like, yo, my father wasn't that good a father, I'm going to be a way better father. My mother wasn't that conscious, I'm going to be even more conscious. This sickness has plagued my family. I'm going to avoid it. Or I'm going to get it out of my system. I'm going to correct that. If as many of us worked on ourselves in this capacity, we set the stage for a healthier generation, more consciously inclined, with more access to potentials that are not dormant but more on the surface so they can better be able to execute on behalf of the generation to come. And in that, everything else will work itself out. Mm -hmm. So there's the answer to your question. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Facts. All facts. You got your phone on you? You can tell Ali, uh, he's good to use the vehicle whenever he needs it. You see, even when a person is trolling, the worst thing that can happen to the troll is if you don't deal with them evasively. You just answer the question because they think they're asking something of you that they themselves couldn't answer within their own reality. And the worst thing you could give them is an accurate account, a good answer. He would hope that I would behave like him and avoid the answer. But now what can you say to an answer like that? I offer you something very practical. Work on yourself. <laughs> if you know you got a temper problem, if you know you're a troll, if you know you're a troll, work on that. You don't. We don't need no more trolls in the black community. They're counterproductive. They cause distraction. And everybody isn't going to be a shock to realize what your goal is. You come in here, and you have nothing but shade to cast. But I'm going to reciprocate every negative thing you say because I literally only see. There's one negative person in the comments because when I'm speaking, I'm answering as I read while I'm talking. But I'm answering everybody, not just one person, I'm answering everybody. As I'm speaking, I have to read. So when y'all say, oh, just ignore this one, ignore it. No, nah, I'm coming out with very important answers because people may ask you that or it may give you good, gu good guidance, good direction. No matter who asks the question, let's just answer it anyway. I mean, ain't nobody going to ask something in the context of this forum that can't be answered because we're having this forum because the universe ordained it, not me. There are no accidents in the universe. Even Isfet, chaos, is a part of the natural order of my eye. Though it is what it is. <laughs> I can sit here in confidence and answer So it's all love. Like I said, I'm getting ready to cook. But what we will not do is lower our frequency for anybody. An ancestor has come into this realm. A new soul has been born. By soul, etymologically, it means psyche. It means mind. A new mind was brought forth. A mind that comes from the universe. The universe is mental. All is mental. That's what we learn from the sacred wisdom to Hudi. All is mental. We know the space inside the cup is not different from the space outside the cup. Only the cup gives the illusion of separation. I can't pour the space out this cup. I can't pour some juice, but I don't pour space out this cup. The same thing with the mind. A new mind has come into this realm. 
But that mind is not separate from the universe. It's part of the same network. So at any point we need answers, we could tap back into the universe that we are a part of already. <clears throat> so peace to you all. My, my oldest daughter is calling me right now. And one of my daughters, my aunt, should be getting dressed right now to help me cook. And my baby girl, my newest daughter, so on some stuff. Number girls, four girls. Peace to you all. Love you.